being here with us at Band of Vices. Absolutely an amazing space. I am Dr. Erica Miller, and seated next to me is my link sister, Dr. Bernadette Lucas, and she is going to introduce the owner and curator extraordinaire, Mr. Terrell Chilton. Thank you so much, Dr. Miller. I could not be more excited or honored to introduce Mr. Terrell Tilford, who I've known for many years. <laughs> and I could not be more excited about his space, about what he's done. So Terrell, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about yourself and how we got here, I would so appreciate it. Sure, well, let me say, contrary to Dr. Miller <laughs> and Dr. Lucas, I am just Terrell. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have doctorate of anything. Uh, except the streets, and uh, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, you know, as always with Band Devices, you know, we keep it real. So first and foremost, I just want to say shout out to all of our people out there that decided to tune this tune in this evening. We really appreciate appreciate y'all. We appreciate the time. Um, I'm Terrell Tilford. I'm the creative director and the founder of Band Devices. This is technically my second gallery and fourth exhibition space since 1999. My previous gallery was Tilford Art Group and one of the smartest things I could have done when I rebranded the gallery in 2015, uh, although my original crew at Tilford Art Group was strong, powerful, everything, I got, a, I got an equally strong, powerful, smart, intelligent, and amazing crew behind Band Devices at the same time. And you know, a lot of people may ask, what is Band Devices? And I don't have the most uh, eloquent explanation that one of my partners recently came up with, but what I will say what is that there was a time when it was wrong to be brown, it was out of pocket to be black, it was considered an abomination to have any physical incapabilities or challenges, um, to be on the quote-unquote wrong side of what sexual orientation is. And for us, all of that is the right side. All of that is, you know, the inclusion, the equity, the validation, the ownership of who and whose we are. So anything that has to do with band devices has to do with being on the wrong side of everything, but celebrating it in the joy of uh, the visual arts and anything else that we decide to celebrate within what we call our sanctuary or our sacred space as well. So for somebody who's been in this particular game since 99, I just wanna say thank you for continuing to rock with us. And if you're discovering us for the first time, we appreciate you, jump on ship. Well, what can we say? 1999, not just Prince. <laughs> 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 Word. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> so, individuals always hear about artists, Da Vinci, Picasso. But when blacks hear of art, they don't necessarily relate it to Jacob Lawrence, Ernie Barnes, Charles Bibbs, Sanford Biggers, Lisa Diane Wedgworth, Word. Elizabeth Catlin. Barnett Honeywood, the list goes on. Yes. So help us understand exactly what is black art. You know, black art from an African American, Afro Caribbean, African African, black American, colored, Negro standpoint, for me, is actually the validation of who you see yourself as within the artwork that um that and we're just going comfortable here like, yeah. like we're in a living room exactly. but, we, but we're not <laughs> but, uh, but 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 really what it is is for me it's 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 really the identification for ourselves of ourselves for ourselves mm -hmm. so whatever that level of empowerment whatever that level of again, validation, whatever that level of seeing yourself, and I'm gonna talk a lot about that this evening, or whatever, but it's really about how you see yourself within the relationship of the work. Because while figurative work drapes and presents a very easy going, 
completely easy, easily identifiable standpoint, the abstract work, if you spend enough time with it, it too will show you of yourself and the inclusiveness of yourself within the work. So I always say that there's two different standpoints of it. There's that of an, uh, a person in a black body, and then there's a person in a white body. Excuse me. And whatever their identification is, whether it's just because it's a black artist, if that's enough for them, then that's okay. And that is what it is. One of the things I noticed in the depictions of the late Ernie Barnes and the late Barnett Honeywood was that they made sure to depict us mm -hmm. in their artwork in a very vivid, surrealistic capacity. Can you explain why it is so important for us to collect black art as blacks in America? Through our ancestral DNA and through that passage, there is so much that was lost, forgotten, um, annihilated, jeopardized, sacrificed, that the joy of those images reinforces our integrity, our humility, our defiance, and our resilience at the same time. So when you see those images of, uh, you know, early Barney Honeywood or Ernie Barnes or something, and the, the, just the, the really sort of ancestral figurative motions, the, 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 the ancestral gestures, those are things that are inherent to our culture, and that's why they made such a powerful, uh, uh, had a, such a res uh, powerful response at the same time, because we saw ourselves within those things, whether it was a, a juke joint or um, 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 the, 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 the other... Sugar Shack? Yeah, Sugar Shacks, the clandestine, you know, you know, you know just, just whatever it was, you know, because, first and foremost, historically, we were not allowed in the other clubs. Exactly. We were not allowed in the other parties. Hell, we had injured in the back of some shit at the same time. So when we see ourselves in that, it's like, oh, man, I remember that. Like, like I remember growing up and, you know, there would be these characters in my living room. You know, Joe Willie and Sweet Lou and these other guys, and they'd be playing Big Whist or, or Spades or Dominoes or something, and Bobby Blue Bland or Marvin Gaye or B.B. King is playing on the radio. So for me, when I see those images, it takes me back to like those home parties yes. that my mother used to host, oh, yeah, you right. know? And it's just, you know, they could be volatile, mm -hmm. and they could be just pure, absolute, unadulterated joy yes. at the same time. Definitely. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. That really moved me. Um, earlier you talked about equity and inclusion, um, and your comments just now spoke to this notion of liberation, mm. um, giving our dreams wings yes. and, and depth and breadth. Um, could you talk a little bit about, in the context of that, what inspired you to open an art gallery featuring African American art, black art, art from people who um, that's been created by people of color? Um, I never had an intention on opening an art gallery. Uh -huh. um, I've, I've lived, you know, a, a joyous part of my life as a professional actor mm -hmm. uh, for many years and have been very grateful and blessed with that. And yeah, Y'all should recognize him from Soul. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because I grew my hair out the past 10 years. Right. <laughs> I love this is called my COVID hair. <laughs> it's called an experiment that kind of has done something. <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, but I first started in my home hosting art shows after I moved back from New York the first time. And I did it because I wanted to help visual artists make a living and support visual artists in the same way that people were supporting me or my family as actors. Mm -hmm. Whether you came out to see our plays, and in, in, the, in the old days, mm -hmm. people used to write letters to the yes. network, yes. that sort of thing. So to me, this was a little bit of a, um, I don't know if it's a swan song or if it's just you know a, 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 a gesture that I go, you know what? I've been blessed in so many different ways. What can I do to help 
people that I had already been doing since I was 16 years old, but then had a newfound uh, consciousness and awareness of it at the same time. So yes. for me, it was going, you know what? Let me hold some art shows in my home and let me help some artists that I love, that I've collected, that just have a good, humble heart, that I just have some sort of, you know, really strong, compelling feeling toward, and actually get powder cake. Yes. You know, it went from, this was the early days still of email. I think the first thing we sent out was snail mail. <laughs> so literally, I went from like 20 people to 80 people in a month to then about 250 people with the next show to literally after eight months and four shows, there were like about 800 to 1,200 people coming through our home in a, in, in a, in a, in a four-week time period. And at the time, the home that we owned, it, it, it used, uh, Nat King Cole used to live in, it was built in 1926. It had the original floors. So there was a lot of energy coming yes. through there and I was a little worried about my floors at the same time. <laughs> but also what it was, was it was so much work because what I was doing yeah. was, we were moving all the furniture out of our home into the driveway. Uh -huh. So there were people that, you know, those who knew us knew, but those who were like the looky loos or who just wanted or may have seen us on TV or something go, you know, let me just check out their house. So people will come in and they'd be like, hey, you know, like the whole house is an art gallery. That's yes. pretty dope. So, uh -huh. so where do you live? <laughs> and I would say, very nearby. Exactly. <laughs> you know, wasn't telling no lies, I wasn't telling no lies. So, so then af after those four shows that really gave me a sort of like an elevated idea of the magnitude and the magnificence of people responding to something that I didn't know was a void mm -hmm. that was out there, exactly. you know, you know, I, at, at the time I, I, I told my wife, I said, you know what, I said, this is the last show in the house. And that whole thing, and she says, well, what are you going to do after that? I said, well, what do you mean? And she goes, well, you know, you've, you've built a community now. That's right. exactly and she right. said, people are depending on you. And I was like, whoa, whoa, that's real pregnant. Hold on a minute. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, look, we help, right. we, I was like, look, we help to support some people, but, you know, I'm not trying to take this on as responsibility exactly. necessarily. I didn't recognize it at the time. And then as, as I love to tell the story, you know, a couple of days later, um, I'm thinking I'm clear and free and this is December and I'm about to roll into 2003 mm -hmm. not thinking about just going you know what it was a good year we had some fun a lot of people got paid beautiful um, got a call from who I call the, the patron saintess of the arts Miss mm -hmm. CCH Pounder mm -hmm. and she called me with that accent that I could never emulate but she called <laughs> and said Terrell and I was like hi CC mm -hmm. she's like what are you doing I was like, well, I'm at home, what's oh, happening? Yes. Yes. And she's like, I'm opening a space on Facebook. She's just saying, I'm opening a space on Pico, mm -hmm. and there's a space a couple doors down from me, and I want you to come and take a look at it. And I was like, why? Mm -hmm. And she, she told me, she was the first one that told me, she said, she said, because you're going to open an art gallery. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you tripping. <laughs> I was like, see, see, I'm not opening a commercial space at all. So we bickered back and forth for about 10 minutes. Come look at the space. Why should I come look at the space? Come look at the space. Fine, I'll come look at the space. <laughs> so I came to look at the space and literally, I looked around, it was a dump, it was trashy, it was a mess, it was gonna cost a lot of money. 20 minutes later, I was like, where's the lease? Yes. That's right, that's right. And you know, from that, that was sort of what I call like a, a, another jump off, mm -hmm. but it was a validation of once again, first, if you build it, they will come. Yes. And number two, people just responded in kind mm -hmm. and in generosity, mm -hmm. like, yo, like, like, this is a real thing That's now. Right. And right. it became right. something, you know, so from just that standpoint, it was just, it was crazy. Yeah, it was so but it was, but it was, it was one of the greatest blessings that could have ever um, um, fulfilled a new direction right. and elevated level of something that I had never really fully thought of. Absolutely. You know, you know I, I remember going to that gallery. Um, you and your wife did an amazing job with it. And I think when individuals walk into art galleries, you know, we're in awe, we're amazed by the beautiful artwork that we see. Um, but many individuals don't know how to start a collection. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to a novice person? How would you instruct them or how would you advise them to start their own collection of black art? 
Well, let me say this. One of the reasons why I, I've opened all of these spaces, and it's been very intentional of where I've opened them, mm -hmm. I've both opened them in predominantly black and brown communities mm -hmm. yeah. because, first and foremost, I didn't grow up with an art gallery in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This is the very neighborhood I grew up in, right. between Mid City and West Adams. Yes. I mean, I went to Los Angeles High School. Mm -hmm. You can't get right. more LA than that, you know, <laughs> and, you know, unless you want to fight somebody at Dorsey, and I love my Dorsey people oh, as well. You know, <laughs> right? But, 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 but really, what it was about was I want people who have not felt part of the conversation mm -hmm. that live in the communities that we do, mm -hmm. that when they walk yeah. down the street, and they peek in the door, mm -hmm. and I say, come on in, mm -hmm. that they, they know this is for them as well. That's right. That it's a profound thing to go, wow, there's an art gallery. I, one, I've had many people say, I don't know what an art gallery is. Right. Um, I don't know how much it costs to get in. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do when I get here. Yeah, right. And what's the protocol, what have you. And I said, come in, experience the work, and if you want to talk about it, we're here for it. That's right. yeah. And I'll, I'll get back to your question, but I'm going to explain something very quickly to you. That when I opened the space across the street, um, uh, our original space here in West Adams, is that uh, we had a barber, um, this Latino brother, um, uh, Joaquin, I believe his name was, down the street. Mm -hmm. And one day he came in with his son, and we had these sculptures on the wall. Yeah. And his son was about four or five years old. And his son ran right up and touched one of the pieces. Mm -hmm. And immediately the father, you know, recoiled. And then he sort of scolded the son. Yeah. And after all being, I said, no, 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 no. I said, it's okay. I said, one, he didn't break nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, said, I said, but two, he didn't know. That's right. That's you know, right. so I'm talking, to the, I'm talking to his son. And one, I told, I told the barber, I said, look, man, I know how it is when, you know, you're an independent contractor, whatever that means, and you're working. That whole thing. If you need five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, or whatever, I said we got cameras in here. I said I'll give you the code to that. that ain't no trip for me, or whatever. I said if you want your son to hang out in the gallery, run around for a minute, it's cool. But what I told the kid, and this is what really sort of had the most indelible impression for me, is that I told him, I said, I said, hey, you know, just so you know. You can't touch the, the work on the walls or whatever. I said, it's cool, now you know. I said, because we have oil on our hands. Yes. I said, so it can affect the artwork. Right. I said, but guess what? If you come in here mm -hmm. and you draw something, yes. I said, guess what? I'll put it on the wall. And I said, you know what? No one will be able to touch it. Right. And to see his face light yes. up in a way that he saw himself in this conversation, yes. I was like, this is the further reason why we do it so that we then begin to understand and then again, once I said, uh, once, as I said before, to be a part of it. So this kid can now grow up going, man, I could be an artist if I wanted to. I could draw something you never know. Yes. It might actually get on the wall. It's absolutely. You know. So I'm sorry. What was the original question? Because I just, you know, I get lost in my own. That's great. That's a great because I mean, think about how many times we in elementary school, preschool, kindergarten, whichever the level was, and we would be proud of the art way, and we come home and our parents put on a refrigerator yeah. to to literally teach that lesson mm -hmm. to our keen son to say your artwork will literally be framed and it will be respected by being on a wall yeah. and it's priceless. Yeah. So, like I was fortunate enough um, to be taught about black art and how to collect it for my late oh, mother. Uh -huh. And actually she was with me when I bought my first art piece yes. by Charles Bibbs. So for a person who doesn't have that, that can, not so much relationship, but a person who just doesn't know, yeah. how do they begin to start their own black collection? Where do they, you know, just not so much where do they go, but how do they figure out that this is the piece for them or maybe not? Right. Where they well, now that you know that there are spaces like us mm -hmm. and residency, and there's Dominique Gallery, and there are um, now a host of galleries throughout the U.S. And trust me, well before we ever arrived. So by we have not reinvented the wheel mm -hmm. in any kind of way. You know, there's been June Kelly. There's Gallery Ortiz. Um, there, there's um, there there are galleries all throughout mm -hmm. the world now. Beautifully so, but what I tell people, I say, <clears throat> first and foremost, start with what you like, mm -hmm. and secondly, 
start what you can afford. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, because, you know, there's a different relationship to posters, prints, jaclades, original works, whether it's uh, photography, sculpture, oil, acrylic, mixed media, conceptual art. There's, there, there, there's so many different creations out there yes. mm -hmm. that I, I took and I said, first, just start with what you like, and then hopefully you find someone mm -hmm. that you trust yeah. that you can just talk to about the work. Mm -hmm. And what I tell a lot of people, particularly a lot of new collectors, that come into the gallery or they call first or something, and this is something that I am part of my entire team, I say, listen, it's not about the transaction. Mm -hmm. The transaction will take care of itself yeah. when it's supposed to. Right. It's about the relationship. Mm -hmm. So if you build a level of trust with someone, yeah. whether, they're built, whether they're spending 150, 1500, 15,000 mm -hmm. with you, they wanna know what, how you stand with the work. Yes. Mm -hmm. They want to have a sense of, yo, is this guy a snake oil salesman? Mm -hmm. Or does he have my back? Right. Can I come in and talk to him about artwork, whether it's on our walls or someone else's walls? And I tell every collector that calls, I say, listen, you can call me from an artist studio. Right. You can call me from another gallery. You can call me looking on Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever, and they do, yeah. and I'll give my honest, viewpoint yes. because again it's not about the transaction the universe for me will take care of that part i don't i don't think about the money mm -hmm. the money will take care of itself right. what i'm more interested in is going how can i help you build a viable collection for yourself mm -hmm. that may have some legacy yes. attached exactly. to it right. that in time you can look back and go you know what i built a relationship with these people mm -hmm. they helped me build something that now we might want to open our own institution mm -hmm. and our family name yes. or it may just be one or two pieces mm -hmm. or something like that but don't buy something that just matches your couch yes because exactly. you're gonna have the artwork longer exactly. than you have the couch exactly. so when somebody comes in and says you know, i got this red couch i go hope oh, pump the brakes <laughs> you know I, I go let's talk about what are your what are your greater Needs, exactly. wants, desires. Exactly. That's right. You know, what's what's your goal in this? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's some people that come in and they're looking to buy specifically as an investment. Mm -hmm. And what I say, I, I like to keep it real, real. I say, look, while I like to think that the majority of artists or all of the artists that we work with will necessarily go up in value, I don't promise that because yep. it's just like the stock market. Right. You know, it can be promised to you on a silver platter That's in any right. kind of way and you buy it and suddenly whatever happens or shifts in the market. So again, if you buy from the standpoint of what you like and what you can afford, mm -hmm. then I'd like to think that you can live with those decisions greater than you can live with anything else. So no matter what happens after that, you know, mm -hmm. that's what you got. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. That's nice.